All right, what is up, my homies, and welcome today to Great Gaming. Today, on another episode of Settlement Builds for Noobs, we're going to be going over the Red Rocket Truck Stop. This is the Red Rocket Truck Stop in Concord, not the one in Nuka World. This is one of the first settlements that most people manage to unlock, especially if you are attempting to bypass the main game elements and not do anything in Sanctuary Hills. You're just after all the side content and plan on doing the main game later. So this, for a lot of people, is the first settlement that you learn how to build, but it's not a very large build area. There is a large unscrappable structure in the middle, which is the actual truck stop slash gas station, and it is pretty uneven terrain for being a parking lot gas station. There's a lot of variation in elevation, and there's also a road that runs through a portion of the map. So. For a lot of people, this might be a pretty difficult location to build through, and so that's why I wanted to show off one of my build styles that I normally call a wall build. That's where you construct a wall around the settlement, and then you integrate a lot of the buildings and structures into that wall. So that's what we're gonna be doing today is looking at my wall build at the Red Rocket Truck Stop. So just as a quick aside note for anyone who's not sh quite sure, the Red Rocket Truck Stop is located here in the northeast eastern or northwestern portion of the map. It's right here, very close to Vault 111, where we first emerged from the tutorial. There's Sanctuary Hills here. Some other nearby settlements are the Abernathy Farm as well. So you kind of get this triangle of very close together settlements that are very easy and very quick to unlock. So for a lot of people, you can spend a very large amount of the early hours of the game just here constructing settlements. So for my caravan view, as is usual, you can see I am linked back to the Starlight Drive-In, which is my primary hub and my unofficial capital for this build. And we're also connected to other settlements in the region like Abernathy Farm, Sanctuary, Ten Pines Bluff, etc. So other than that, there's not a whole lot to go through. There are only four people here, so the settlement is much more developed than you need to support four people. I currently do not have everything that I need to equal the 21 people that I have at the Starlight Drive-In, but I do have enough to support at least a dozen people without any problems. I just haven't recruited that many people here yet. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with our tour of the Red Rocket Truck Stop. All right, so you can see here that there is a rather large wall. The wall is usually around two stories tall in most places. There are some places where it dips down to a little over one story, and down here by the road, it gets to about two and a half. But I do try and keep a relatively equal uh, height for the wall all the way around. So this is pretty important because there are some occasions where death claws will spawn in. So I've had some death claws spawn in from over here and attack. And it's a strange bug. It really only seems to happen here where I get attacked by death claws. And the settlers, if you talk to them afterwards, seem to think that they've just fended off a raider attack, which is kind of interesting. So they don't think they're gunners or synths or Brotherhood of Steel. They think that they're raiders and not death claws. So I'm not sure if that was an oversight or if this is just a weird bug that triggers a battle sequence. But it is what it is, and so I like to keep nice high walls here. You can also see that I have turrets all the way around the settlement, but they are most heaviest near the regular spawn points. So right here is a spawn point, and there's another one on the opposite end of the settlement, so I'll talk about that later. But let's go ahead and just take a quick jog around the settlement. And so you can see some areas where it looks like the wall is kind of off-centered, like it's not stacked on top of itself. And that's because there are some places where the walls cannot clip underneath the ground properly. And so in cases like that, I use the concrete floor foundation uh, object, which will extend down to the bottom and it snaps to the side of the wall instead of directly underneath it. So you still get the complete surround uh, concrete wall structure, but you also end up with these platforms, and you can see that on the inside, which I'll show off as we get there. And so also around back, you do have this unscrappable hedge, which you can incorporate into your existing defenses. So 
NPCs can't move through it, and you can't really construct anything through it as well. So you can have two options. You can either try and move your wall objects as close to the hedge as possible, or you can just try and integrate the hedge into the walls, which is what I've done here. It's just kind of a natural extension of my existing defenses. And so down here, you can kind of see this drop and you get a little bit better idea of just how uneven the terrain is for something that's supposed to just be a flat parking lot. And so once again, you see a pretty heavy concentration of turrets on this side, and that's because up here on this hillside is another spawn point for enemy attackers as well. And so this kind of completes our loop, and so we are now ready to take a look inside our settlement. All right. So as we step inside, you kind of see the main trading area here. As I said, this is going to require at least six people by itself, and there's only four people total in the settlement. So we do have quite a bit of recruiting to have to do before our trading post is completely up and operational. We also have the caravan trading post object so that all of the Bunker Hill traders will come in here and set up shop. Now, someone pointed out in my Starlight Drive-In video, I mentioned that you have to do a certain um, quest for the railroad in order, in order to unlock, but I had a commenter point out that it's actually a quest for Bunker Hill, which is technically correct. Now, most of the people at Bunker Hill work for the railroad, which is why I typically tend to kind of mix them up in my mind, but it is fair to say that it's a Bunker Hill quest that unlocks rather than a railroad quest. So that is a distinction that we can make here. So. Anyway, moving on. So here you can kind of see the results of those concrete foundation platforms that fill in where I can't actually clip a wall underneath. So if you look at the opposite side, you can once again see that kind of slightly off center, not quite stacked on top of each other wall. And that's because I had to use the foundation instead. So you will see these little platforms here and there. Hey, plasma rifle. gather well shucks I'll deal with it later okay so here we have the main garden area so rather than trying to find a spot to build a greenhouse or work on building a rooftop garden like I normally do there's more than enough buildable dirt area to put a farm and so I decided to just put the farm on the ground here it's a little more authentic to the location kind of like using the bar stool or not bar stool, the little movable stands for the market instead of my usual vault tech style uh, stores. So it all just seems to fit a lot better with the unscrappable red rocket, which is pretty rusted and run down. So it seems to fit a lot better with what this settlement is, which is once again, trying to aim for a move in the right direction to rebuilding society, but still grounded in a post-apocalyptic world. All right, so over here we have the Brahmin fence with the movable gate, so you can open it, go inside, play with your Brahmin, whatever. And it is separated from pretty much everyone else. It is incorporated into the walls, so it's making that most efficient use of the resources because concrete and steel, steel is pretty easy to get your hands on, but concrete really isn't, so you have to make a lot of trips to vendors to purchase it. Uh, over here we have our rate or our reactor shack, whatever you want to call it. So this is just one fusion reactor is enough to supply the entire settlement. I don't have to go hog wild with it. And some people mentioned on my Starlight Drive-In video that the vault tech reactors generate way more power, and that is true, but they're also a lot less compact and use a lot more nuclear material as a resource necessary to construct. The Fusion G or the fusion generators don't take that much uh, nuclear material, so they are a lot less of something that you have to go shopping for or have to go hunting for like super mutant uh, suiciders who generate some of that nuclear material when they detonate themselves and a lot less of that uh, nuclear material you might have to go hunting for in like the glowing sea or 
buying a whole bunch of Blast Radius board games or something. So I usually use those generators for a reason, and it's just more resource, more resource friendly. All right, so here again, we do see we have these platforms here to fill in the gaps where we can't place a wall. And once again, we kind of see that 360 degree turret defense available. Over here, we have our outdoor basketball court. There isn't a lot of room, so it is just a half court basketball court, unlike the ones that you may have seen at my other settlements that are full court. So this one is just a nice little, nice little option available to settlers. It's still a extreme luxury in the grand scheme of things. I do only have one water pump here, so I can only support 10 settlers here, but there's not too much of a problem with throwing another water pump right behind this one, so kind of here in front of this window as well. So there is a lot of room for expansion when it comes to water generating facilities. And this building, it's not that easy to do anything with. This big round wall kind of is difficult to construct around. And so generally, I don't do a whole lot with it. I did go ahead and throw in a couple extra walls so I could throw in a pair of lavatories, one for men's room, one for women's room. They're both just a toilet and a sink, so nothing fancy. And here we have the garage of the Red Rocket Truck Stop, which is where we can construct and repair anything we need to. It's where the workshop's located. And this is kind of where they get that idea for the powered shop door. So just like the powered shop door for the main settlement where I can just flip a switch and it closes and now the settlement is completely surrounded by a wall that can't be penetrated. This is kind of where that idea comes from with the powered shop door that comes with the Red Rocket truck stop and is not scrappable. And this location, this Red Rocket is the only one I've seen that has the, slided, or the sliding doors, which is really cool. I wish you could construct them in the workshop, but unfortunately you can't. And I'm not sure if I remember to actually show it off, so I will here. This shop door works exactly the same way. You just flip the switch, and now the settlement is completely secure. Flip it again, and we're open for business. All right, so moving over here, we have kind of our happiness center. And of course, I'm going to get stuck behind this guy. All right, you know so my usual settlements, I have a separate cafe which houses or which hosts the bar and like the Nuka World mixing machine and all of the seating for people to eat at. And then I usually have a separate lounge area, which is just the comfortable seating place for people to hang around, relax, talk to their friends, whatever. In this location, because I wanted the market to be a little more organic and more like a on-the-road trading post, like this settlement is kind of designed to be, I decided to leave the bar out there and I just combined the lounge and the dining areas together, mostly due to space constraints as well. So moving up here, we do have the people glitching out and unable to walk past a weight set. So we have the gym, which is a nice resource friendly way of increasing the happiness of your settlers. So both the pommel horses and the weight sets increase happiness for your settlers without requiring power and without requiring a settler to be assigned to them. Oh my gosh, he just disappeared. So that is a nice way, especially for early builds, if you're just getting a settlement off the ground, Throwing in some weight sets and pommel horses will really increase your settler happiness and doesn't take a lot of resources, just some leather, some steel, and that's about it. So up here on the final deck on this building is our arcade. And if any of you have watched my videos before, you're probably familiar with this. We have slot machines from Vault 88. We have some Creation Club arcade cabinets. I didn't buy these. I just got them for free when they went on sale and those all generate happiness. So each one of those, they just require one power, so less power than a turret, less power than a spotlight, and they generate happiness for the settlers. There's also these Nuka World games, which I just discovered recently are actually functional. So you insert a Nuka K token, and they actually start playing, keep track of score, everything. So it was kind of an interesting thing that I didn't really realize was a thing. And so these both work 
just like they would in the Nuka Cade in Nuka World. I really wish that the shooting gallery from Nuka World could be constructed in Workshop, but it's really space intensive, so I understand why it isn't, but it would still be nice if you could construct that. I would definitely take advantage of that if it was a thing. All right, and finally, we're going to take a look at our elevated platforms. So on my wall builds, I usually will do elevated structures that are incorporated into the walls. So here is where I have all of my settler housing. So every settler gets a pretty similar setup. It is just a bed, a trunk, one light so that they're not in utter darkness, and that's it. It's nice, simple, it's still private accommodation, it's everything that a wasteland settler coming into the settlement with nothing but the clothes on their back is going to need, and it's still a lot more luxurious than anything that they could expect by just throwing out a sleeping bag in the middle of the wasteland. Up here on this platform is a pretty similar story, only the um, bedrooms are located vertically instead of horizontally, so they're a little, or you can cram a few more beds onto this platform than you could the other one. And finally, we come out here to the roof of the Red Rocket, which is accessible from a couple different ways. There is this catwalk, which was just perfectly um, done to where I can put the catwalk on the roof and then build the structure there. I'm not sure if this was just luck or whether I actually started constructing from the rooftop and worked my way around the settlement, but I doubt I did that. That's a lot of planning I probably would not have taken the time for. Um, and then here we have a back way onto the rooftop over by our little generator room and Brahmin shed. All right, so you probably noticed that this video just switched from night to day, and I am fighting some system instability right now. Uh, I just went through a forced reboot. So we'll go ahead and try and get through this pretty quickly. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get back to it. So one thing that I like to do with this wall build around the Red Rocket truck stop is during early in game, I will usually surround the perimeter of this canopy or awning for the Red Rocket with turrets so that they have the elevated shooting platform. And then as I build the walls up, I move the turrets to the edge of the wall. So you see here, there's two pretty heavy concentrations of turrets and they're directly opposite of the normal spawn point. So when things attack, they tend to spawn either up here on that hillside or they tend to spawn down on the riverbank between here and Sanctuary Hills. So those are the two most common spawn points and so that's why you see there's the heaviest concentration of turrets. Plus, if anything wants to get inside the settlement from those spawn points, they have to make it through that gate that's down here first. And so they'll have to fight from underneath the turrets to get inside, assuming that the gate hasn't been closed already. So let's go ahead and keep going with our tour. So as is usual, I have several suits of power armor on display. This is kind of one of my newer settlements, so it doesn't have the X01 or the T60 power armor that I have at most of the others in my settlement videos that you've seen. So they get the next best, which is the T51. So I have five suits of T51. There's currently only four people residing at the settlement, so there's actually more power armor than there is people. I do store this without the fusion core so that people can't just jump in and run off with my power armor. I have had that happen in the past where roving bands of Minutemen have hopped in my power armor and then just walked off with it, which really made me angry. So I do store it without fusion cores just to make sure that it stays where it's at. All right, and then finally we have this elevated platform on top of this housing deck. And so you see we do have two batteries of artillery. You get it from doing the big guns quest for the Minutemen. And as is usual, I have these at every single one of my settlements as I build them up. And right now only one of them is manned, but as more people move into the settlement, I'll have it fully manned. I also have an artillery battery at Sanctuary Hills. You can just barely see it out here on top of that large structure over there. Um, that's another one of my tower builds. It's kind of a, kind of an experimental tower build that I was working on, but it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted. But you do see 
artillery is fairly normal in my settlements and I do that just to have that consistent artillery coverage no matter where I am anywhere in the map even though I almost never use it it's kind of nice to have that option available as part of your little head cannon story and with that said that is it for the red rocket truck stop everything just kind of integrates into these walls nothing can get past it and this is kind of a diamond city outside of diamond city everyone feels safe inside the walls and those walls can be shut at a moment's notice everything gets incorporated in and you get the most efficient use of your building materials by incorporating all of your other structures into the wall itself if you have any comments or feedback please feel free to leave it in the comments below once again like subscribe hit the notification bell the more people that we can share this content with the more likely youtube is to offer it to more people and to make this a resource for more people moving forward as always, this has been Great Gaming, and I'll see you all here next time. Have fun, stay safe, and I will catch you all later.